Today, I just wanted to talk about the differences between a mutual fund and index fund. So first, I want to talk about mutual funds. Mutual funds are an investment vehicle, which includes stocks, bonds, or maybe other assets as well. And these mutual funds are created by multiple investors pooling their money together to then invest in these assets. And mutual funds can be actively managed or they can be passively managed. And what that means is that you may have a manager who actively chooses what stocks or bonds are going to be included in this mutual fund, which may involve more or less trading depending on what their strategy is for that mutual fund. And now the more passively managed funds are funds that may follow a specific set of stocks or maybe an index of funds, which we'll go into talk about later in this video. And so the main thing with mutual funds is that it gives the average investor access to professionally managed funds that they may otherwise not have access to. Now mutual funds are not traded throughout the day. They're all bought and sold at the end of the trading day. So that means no matter what happens in the middle of the day during the 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. trading period that you would typically hear about, these funds are only bought and sold after the trading day ends at 4 p.m. Eastern. Now these are mutual funds, which are also index funds. So right now I'll go into talking about what an index fund actually is. Now an index fund is a portfolio of stocks or bonds which is created to match or closely track an index. And the first index fund to ever be created was created by John Bogle. Now the indexes that you would normally hear about are Standard & Poor's version of the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now the S&P 500 is a portfolio of 500 stocks, typically what you think of as the quote unquote top 500 companies in the US. And then the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a portfolio of 30 stocks. Now, the reason I say quote unquote with the top 500 stocks is because that Apple, which used to be part of the S&P 500, is now part of the Dow Jones 30. So while Apple is considered one of the top stocks in the US, because Standard & Poor's creates both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones 30, any of the stocks that are in the Dow Jones 30 are not in the S&P 500. Now these are just the two most popular index funds. There are also other indexes that track small cap stocks and mid cap stocks. But the main point with indexes is that they don't change very often. And this is why index funds are considered passively managed funds. And index funds can come in the form of a mutual fund or as an ETF. And this is why there's a lot of confusion because an index fund doesn't have to be a mutual fund and it doesn't have to be an ETF, but it is one of the above. Now index funds can come in the form of a mutual fund or an ETF. And so an example of an index fund that is a mutual fund, like I mentioned earlier, is VTSAX. And that's the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, the mutual fund version. But the ETF version of the Total Stock Market Index Fund would be VTI. And the same goes for the S&P 500. For the mutual fund version of the S&P 500 Index Fund, you have VFINX. But for the ETF version of the index fund for the S&P 500, it is the ticker symbol VOO. And there are many other companies that have these index funds, whether it's a mutual or an ETF, and it could be made by Vanguard or Fidelity, Charles Schwab. Many of the big financial companies out there all have their own version of a mutual fund or of an ETF. So next we'll get into what an ETF is. Now the meaning of an ETF is an exchange traded fund. And so what that means is that these funds are traded on an exchange. So very similar to a mutual fund, an ETF is just a holding of a group of stocks or bonds, which is all included in one fund. But the main difference, as I mentioned, is that an ETF is traded on an exchange. So this means that you can buy and sell that ETF throughout the trading day from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, because you don't have to wait to the end of the day to buy your exchange traded fund like you would with a mutual fund, this can be a good or a bad thing. This means that you can take advantage of any big drops or any big gains in the market by either buying or selling the ETF that you own. But this also means that you could make some unnecessary trades just because you're trying to keep up with whatever's going on in the news for that day. So for instance, during this coronavirus craze, there are a lot of people that may have been buying or selling in and out of the market. Whereas if you own a mutual fund, you would only be able to do it at the end of the day. An index fund is a really good idea for long-term stock investors, but it's not the best idea for three reasons. 
First, an index fund costs money. If you give your money to a financial advisor, you pay as much as 1-2% to in management fees. That means if you invest as much as a few thousand a year, it can add up to a few hundred thousands after 30 to 40 years. That's as much as a small house. Now an index fund is cheaper, but it still adds up to as much as a nice car. And you want that car to stay in your own garage and not in the garage of the index fund manager. Second, you may not be aware of this, but indexes are weighted by the size of the company. So a large stock has a bigger size of the index than a smaller company. This means that if a stock appreciates, its share in the, in the index gets bigger. And the result is you own more of the expensive stocks than the cheap stocks. That eats into your returns. And last but not least, you have risks. You don't actually own the stocks that the index fund owns. You just own a part of the index fund. This is called counterparty risk. You don't need to take that risk. There is one strategy that makes index fund investing less risky, and that is dollar cost averaging. So you invest a fixed amount of money or a fixed percentage of your income into an index fund, no matter what happens in the stock market, no matter what happens in the economy, and you constantly invest that money in the very long term over your 45 year working career. After 45 years, you will be very, very well off. However, that is the only way to invest in index funds properly with less risk because you will invest, yes, when the index funds are high, but you will also invest when the index funds is cheap and that cheapness will give you extreme returns over the long term. If you listen to Buffett, he says invest in index funds, but only if you do it consistently over a long period of time. And this means that you also do it before a recession you don't start saving cash, not investing in order to save something if you lose your job or something like that. So the most important thing is to really invest when there is trouble, when there is a recession, even if you might lose your job. If you don't invest at that point in time, you end up as the average investor. If you want to invest in index funds, you should use Vanguard funds and not ETFs. ETFs are made for trading and liquidity. And as said before in the dollar cost averaging section, you want to invest when there is trouble, when there is blood on the streets. And you don't want to have the ability to trade your ETFs. You pay a fee when you trade, like a stock, like you trade stocks. And you pay a higher fee on the ETF, well, than Vanguard. So really invest somewhere where you cannot touch your money when you're forced to invest there every month, because that's the best way to invest in the long term in index funds.